Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My guest today is retired attorney Jeffrey Watanabe. Jeff has advised many people from across the sea on how to do business in Hawaii. Jeff was born on Maui, went to high school on Oahu, and is well known throughout the state of Hawaii as a business and community leader. During his law school years at George Washington University, Jeff worked for U.S. Senator Daniel Inouye. When Jeff returned to Honolulu after law school, he became a Deputy Attorney General for the state of Hawaii. Jeff then decided to start his own local law firm, which is now called Watanabe Ng LLP. Throughout his career and even now, Jeff has been very active serving on the boards of about 20 different public and private companies and not-for-profit organizations. He has received local and national recognition for his work as a board leader and in the community. As an attorney, Jeff's primary focus was to serve as a strategic counselor for non-local clients who wanted to do business in Hawaii. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that and maybe hopefully a little bit about his background. First, Jeff, welcome. It's good to have you here, thank you very much. Thanks, Mark, good uh, to be here. And also, thank you to uh, Connie Chang for setting this up and putting us together. I appreciate that very much. Amen. <laughs> uh, I wanna ask you right off the bat some questions about things that I've heard you say and talk about uh, advice that you've given to clients, people from across the sea who want to come to Hawaii. You say that doing business in Hawaii is just like doing, doing business in the United States, but newcomers to Hawaii should have a basic understanding of Hawaii's unique culture and environment. Now, what is that insight about? and tell, tell us a, a little bit about what you're, what you're talking about. What's unique? What, what's going on? What's yeah. the advice that you have? Sure. I think there's a general recognition on the part of the business community that people, companies that wish to do business in Hawaii, that Hawaii is somewhat different. Oftentimes they, they can't articulate the reasons they believe that to be the case, but they, they sense it. And capitalists are, by and large, pretty simple people. When they don't have something, they go out and they buy it. And I was sort of one of their purchases, I guess. <laughs> um, but, but more specifically to your question, you know, we look at Hawaii as a relatively small place uh, mm -hmm. with a population of about a million four. But it has the feel of a much larger city because we bring in now almost nine million visitors. We're an island community, which also raises a whole bunch of different sensitivities. We're racially uh, unique, uh, with no majority. We're a heavily regulated environment um, and a highly centralized governmental structure with a legislator, legislature that can always view as it can be viewed as being hyperactive in, at times. Um, it has an incredible, unique host culture, which is an important part of of, our, of where we are. We've got a, a large um, visitor industry and a military presence. But maybe as important, we are um, capital restricted. Uh, the capital formation in Hawaii, other than for real estate, is relatively mm -hmm. limited. So that means we rely very heavily on outside investment. Um, and so that makes our economy somewhat unique. Uh, it's a unique place of doing business. So, fo so folks are c coming into Hawaii with money to do something. Correct. Okay. Correct. And much of my job uh, as, a, as an attorney was to help them achieve their objectives given those sensitivities in, in Hawaii. Okay. So, so somebody would come to you, uh, I guess, I mean, how, how would they hear about you? First of all, I guess they, you, you, you'd been working yeah. with, with others. 
and and they're looking for somebody to do what? You know, I was the outside guy on a law firm I mean, for the, all the lawyers in, uh, that are, might be watching this. So you're a little bit like a geisha. You're, you're, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You are. You're supposed you're, to be out there, and you're supposed to be accessible. And then much of what you're doing is convincing clients that they came to the right law firm for the wrong lawyer. Because if you don't do that, what you end up becoming is a bottleneck, right? I, uh, I, I like the geisha. I, I, I like that because that brings in a cultural uh, aspect of, sure. of what you're talking sure. about, too. That's unique to Hawaii. Right. And so you're, you, become a, you become a little bit of a guide. Um, a lot of my work, uh, both for the non from the nonprofit side and the for-profit side, involved um, being in touch with large law firms on the mainland primarily in New York, but in Washington also, and in, in Chicago, and San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Once you get on their systems, uh, when they ever, whenever they have a client coming to Hawaii, oftentimes you'll get a referral from those, those large law firms. So whether it's Skadden Arps, or whether it's, you know, who are Ropes and Gray, or whoever it is, um, when they, when they have a client that wants to come here, oftentimes I would get, I would get a call saying, hey, you got to Will you talk to these people? Okay, well, I, I got to ask you something that's kind of uh, that you just brought up, and that is that you made re you you, you kind of practice what you preached. It sounds like because you had relationships now with law firms on the mainland that sent you folks that needed assistance oh, to, to do business. So you you developed that those relationships. How, how, I mean, can, how did you do that? I mean, what? Well, part of it came from the fact that um, I was uh, I went to school in Washington, I so see. the Washington law firms clearly um, came from that from that experience. Many of the law firms that I worked with came from my my work on boards. I see. Uh, many of Hawaii's public company boards actually use local law firms, but they also use New York, New York, Chicago, San Francisco law firms. And so those relationships came Net, up as a result of networking, that. in networking. other words. Right. Okay, so so the law firms are going to send you some mainland guy, mm -hmm. no local experience. Correct. What 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 are you telling them? What what are, what, what what do you tell them about Hawaii, and what do you tell them in order to to bring in this capital? Yeah. To to do something. I think perhaps the most important thing that they that people have to understand when they come to do business in Hawaii is that Hawaii's environment is by and large relational it is not transactional mm -hmm. and yet if you're a you know you're a big time executive for for a large company you're going to tend to be by nature more transactional they come here they want to get something done uh, and what you have to what you have to have them understand initially is that in order to get things done in Hawaii, you need to focus on the relational aspects of, of business. Okay, so transactional, is that, do you think, is that a mainland trait? I mean, is that a, a mainland big business trait or, or just generally a business trait of the mainland? And, and they, 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 when they come over here, it's not just paying out money and doing things. They have to Correct. have a better, they better have to be knowledge. Trusted. I think people um, are somewhat put up uh, fooled by the fact that Hawaii is, looks like a very friendly, open place. My, my experience has been, in reality, that's not necessarily true, um, that Hawaii has been used to making people feel comfortable as part of the Aloha spirit, part of tourism, part of, part of being open and local. Um, but there's a level at which they want to make sure that they can trust what you say and what you do. And that's that's an important threshold for for somebody who is transactional in nature, who just wants to get a you know do a deal and be successful and be successful in, in Hawaii. That's I correct. I mean, so so something that may work in D.C. or mm -hmm. California or somewhere else may not work here. That is correct. Okay, that's absolutely. So correct. what do you tell them? I'm, I'm I come into your office. Hey, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I just came in from uh, you know Detroit. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, you know invest some money and make a bunch back in Hawaii. Right. Well, I think the first thing you do <laughs> is you have to assess the person. Okay. You have to assess their openness, their willingness to be flexible, um, uh, and if and frankly, if if you don't see those characteristics in my situation, oftentimes I would not accept them as clients. Mm -hmm. 
because my credibility depended, and, and the future of what I did depended on my, on my ability to be able to represent people that understood how to do business here. So if I found somebody who was a real Yahoo who came in and said, look, don't give me all of that other nonsense, I just want to do deals, I would tell them, you know, I tell you what, there's another law firm down the road that could probably serve you better. And then what, what do you tell them about the relationships and the culture of Hawaii, and how do you translate that so that they understand it? Yeah, what, part, part of it, I think, is history. Part of it is understanding Hawaii's, con at least contemporary history, the fact that uh, a change does not occur quickly here. Uh, we, we tend to have long regimes, political regimes. Um, many of our regimes are in excess of 50 years, which is really long for, for any place. Um, they have to understand the fact that we are an island community and that each island has a, has a perhaps different, slightly different perspective. Um, we, I also tell them that it is very important for them to understand that for them to do business here and be successful at it, they need to develop credibility. Now, how do you do that in a culture that, like Hawaii's? And right. Hawaii is sort of a mixture between Asian and uh, uh, mainland cultures. Um, one thing I tell them is uh, to be careful about thinking that you have agreement when you don't have agreement. People in Hawaii are really willing to say yes to almost anything, and, right? And smile and welcome. Absolutely. But that may not be the accurate message. Um, I, I think that's one thing. I think that it is important for them to understand that promising less and delivering more is a really important characteristic that works in Hawaii. Um, the other thing to remember is, of course, that we're part of the United States. And, and I know that sounds silly, <laughs> but that's not often the case um, with somebody coming in from who has lived all of their lives in northern New Jersey. Uh, we, uh, we, we tell them to be careful about uh, how they approach a problem by not saying, for instance, well, this is the way we do it on the mainland. Right, because you know, frankly, nobody likes to hear that. Right. right, it doesn't matter whether you're in Hawaii or in Alabama or anywhere else. Uh, I, I think one of the things I, I try to emphasize with clients is that in Hawaii, perception tends to outlast reality. But what I mean by that is, if you make a good first impression, even if you turn out to be a little bit of a jerk later on. The perception of you being a relatively good guy, a good person, continues. On the other hand, if you do something initially that is that is viewed as being disagreeable to the to the population, then even if you change and you become a really good guy, it doesn't matter because that perception will outlast. That, that's that the original impression you make right. of somebody. First impression is very important. And 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 you you know you, you mentioned the relationships now. What, you know, what, what are we talking about when we talk about relationships? Is that politics? Is that business? Or is that, who, who are we talking about when you come to Hawaii? What, what relationships are we talking about? Yeah, they're all the relationships. Uh -huh. um, part, part of it is political because we, we tend to have long regimes um, that, uh, and we're in a heavily regulated environment. Uh, the political, the political uh, impressions that you leave are important. On the other hand, what I used to tell my clients is don't discuss politics in Hawaii. I mean, if you go to a Chinese restaurant with 10, uh, you know, Chinese, a, a dinner with 10 people, and, and you're, from an, you're an outsider and you start talking about <laughs> politics, right. f five of the people will think you're nuts and don't agree with you, right. and the other five don't care. So don't do it. And that's going to blow up your relationships. Well, it could. Right, right, it could. Right from the beginning. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to, I want to take, we're going to take a short break right now, and then I'm going to come back. I may ask you some personal questions. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on ThinkTech Hawaii. 
every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. We are back and I am with Jeff Watanabe and we are, he, he is the geisha of his law firm, <laughs> which I, I really like that description and what I, I'd like to kind of go into that a little bit more uh, and find out uh, a little bit more about advice that you give to people, Jeff, uh, who are coming here. Uh, and also, I want to find out a little bit more about you uh, before we're through with our program. So, uh, Jeff, uh, somebody comes into your office, they're asking for advice on a transaction, you're telling them, we, you know, Hawaii, we're, this is relationship, and that seems like an Asian idea too, the relationships are quite a bit more important than transactions in some ways. Can somebody from the mainland come to Hawaii, listen to your advice, can they become local? Okay. Abs absolutely. I think uh, years ago I was doing work with, with actually a, a, a Maori chief of all people who was connected with the East West Center that I did a lot of work for. And I asked him once, I said, how do you decide who's a Maori? And he looked at me and he said, well, if you behave like a Maori, you're a Maori. <laughs> if you don't behave like a Maori, you're not a Maori. And I think to some degree that also uh, applies to people who come here from the outside. If they behave in a manner which is consistent with the, the local culture and is sensitive and is, and is um, um, to uh, the kinds of differences we have and the kinds of circumstances we have, you can be very successful. Um, and, and, and I've been surprised at times at how quickly people can uh, acclimate to that. Most of them are because they're staying here. So they have a real motive to try to, to, try to uh, fit in and understand how things are going. Um, but I, I, think it can, I think that's uh, uh, quite possible. And, and I kind of hear you saying, too, that they may come here as transactional, but they become relationship. That's right. And, and that's the big difference right. to me. I mean, that's what I, I hear you saying. I, I, is that right? That's correct. And I, I think, you know, the first thing you do is you tell them to take off their suits. Yeah. The first thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, second thing is you really encourage them to listen to, to what other people are saying. Not necessarily agreeing or disagreeing, but just listening. Uh, empathy, I think, is a big part of that. And there are just people, it doesn't matter where they're from, they can be from Virginia or Oklahoma or New York or any place else, who can be very empathetic, um, be very open to, to understanding uh, new environments. And, and because they can ingratiate themselves with other people who also have credibility, that credibility becomes transferable to some degree. And that's a really important part of this network that we have in Hawaii in, in terms of relational relationally doing business. And that's why it's good to have a lawyer or somebody that is local that is is perhaps helping them make that transition into yeah. into the relationship. I had a I had I had someone an old friend of mine who I, I will not I won't attribute him to but but I thought it was pretty effective. He he once introduced me as a cultural translator. Oh. Now, there are a lot of other people who are cult cultural translators too. Uh, but when I thought about it, a, a big part of my job was, in fact, doing that. Just and that. what does that mean to you? Well, it, it means it means 
being able to translate to people who um, uh, may not speak the language um, what is really going on and why it's going on um, and having them understand that and participate in a, in a manner consistent with that. And then they have an ah, uh, yes. ah moment is, yeah. what, is what we're talking right. about. Is that, is that it? Yeah. Uh, very much so. Okay. Very much so. Jeff, I want to ask you about you a little bit, okay? Okay. You're born on Maui. I was born on Maui. My, uh, Tell me about that. My grandparents were, uh, uh, I was raised a good part of my time on, 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 in plantations. Um, and it was an interesting uh, it was an interesting development because the plantation that my, my um, maternal grandparents lived in uh, was in Pu'unene, which is in, in uh, an HCNS uh, plantation uh, that was run by the Baldwin family. And many years, many years later, I became a member of the board of Alexander and Baldwin. So I got to go back and visit, um, visit the, the, uh, the sort of the seeds of my, uh, my wow. where I came from. And, and of course, you told everybody as, as you're going up the, into becoming a board member where you came from. Not initially. I did not. <laughs> not initially. Um, not because I was trying to hide it at all, but just because I was trying to remain sensitive to their culture, right? Uh, I mean, they're, okay. you know, they come from a different place, too. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> um, but so, so I spent a lot of my time uh, on Maui uh, as a youngster. I lived, uh, lived with my grandparents for, uh, for a while in, in Pu'unene, um, and then came to Honolulu as a, when I was 10 or 11 and then attended public schools until I graduated. You, 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 gra <coughs> you graduated from, from, from Roosevelt? From Roosevelt. Okay, now, interestingly, you were on the board of Punahou. Isn't that something? Uh, no, okay, Roosevelt, and, and they have that <coughs> competition, they have that, oh. the, the paintbrush yeah. uh, football you know in the past. Oh, you know it, about that. Oh, yeah, well, I, I sure do, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm very interested in that. Okay, yeah. uh, uh, what? Can <laughs> what drove it, what, me to do that? Well, well, what, tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, my my wife, who's a has been my partner for for almost 50 years, Lynn. I was busy running in front of trains for the first 20 years of our marriage, and so issues of education and raising the kids really fell fell in her belly. Okay. So she decided where the children are going to go to school and she's from she's from uh, originally from Pasadena. So she decided they were she was going to send them to Punahou, which we did. Uh, many years later um, two of my very closest friends came to see me Walter Dodds and Dwayne Steele. Um, and uh, they, they were both Punahou trustees. And they said to me, Jeff, the board of Punahou is going to come and ask you to sit on their board, and we want you to say yes. And I said, why would I do that? I didn't go to Punahou, you know? I mean, we were rivals of Punahou. Why should I do that? And, and they said, because we're your closest friend, and we're <laughs> asking you to do it. They're using and, the relationships. Well, they're using absolutely. that against you. You know, and when you're when you're in the geisha business, <laughs> hey, you got to go along with these things, right? Okay. Anyway, that that's slight slightly overstatement, but but that's how I got involved in it. And it took me a long time to get used to the notion that I was a I was a Puno trustee. I went to Roosevelt. Um, I found, I however, that I knew something about governance because of my board work, and. I think have been able to provide a perspective to other uh, to the board about how people outside of the Punahou family um, view the school, um, and I think that's an important perspective for them to have. So it's been a wonderful experience, and of course Jim Scott is a, a terrific uh, uh, president, and so that that helps. And then I've developed very close relationships with the other board members as well. But this weekend. Uh, this week, I go to a reunion of uh, the of, of of my Roosevelt classmates. Okay, so all right. I'm looking forward to seeing them. And that should be interesting yeah. discussions uh, uh, about where everybody is gone. Yeah, what, hopefully what? Won't, they won't ask me why I'm on the Puno board. <laughs> well, they can watch this program and find out. <laughs> um, also, I, I noticed that during law school, you worked for Senator Inouye. Yes. What, what was that like, and, and what, what was he like? And what, I mean, I, I have great admiration for, for Senator Inouye, 
uh, he, he was always been very supportive of projects involving relationships uh, that I, I've discovered. You, you know, the senator was a, for, when, I, when I first started working for him when I was in law school, I was on his patronage. In, in the old days, you, oftentimes patronage meant you were being paid by somebody else, but you really kind of worked for the senator who was your patron. Uh -huh. And um, the senator was a 44-year-old hmm. first-term uh, senator wow. who had never lost an election. Yeah. So he was a, he was a young guy. Really? Uh, had yeah. a, um, a, a young child who was like, probably one year old or so. Uh, Kenny was one year old. And so it was a, he had not reached the level of, of uh, prominence. Just he, it he just really? starting. It was just starting out. Yeah. He had been in the House before that. Wow. Um, as time went on, he became a very important part of my life. Uh, what, one thing I learned was once you work for a senator, you always work for a senator. And, so, and the other was that um, um, he gave me some really important um, advice, which I never regretted. And please, I'll, please, yeah. Yeah. What, one night, uh, you know, when, when, a, when a senator is waiting for a vote, it can be 10 o'clock at night or 1 o'clock in the morning, the whole staff is still in the office. Nobody leaves until the senator leaves, and that's true of any Senate office. Hmm. So there was a night like that. It was during the, the uh, Southeast Asian Wars, and, and he was waiting for a vote, floor vote. And so he was kind of bored, I think. He didn't have anything to do, so he started walking around the office. And I had an office someplace, in a cor I had a desk someplace in a corner, and he stopped and he looked at me and he said, aren't you in your third year in law school? I said, yes. He said, what are you going to do? I said, well, you know, Senator, I'm not sure, but I, I just got an offer from, from one of the committees to, to go on committee staff, so I may do that. And he said, don't do that. Go home. So I said, well, why? And he said, well, because you shouldn't think that, that your ability to now become a lawyer or whatever, have a good education was a result just of your hard work. It came as a result of the sacrifice of a whole lot of people, all of whom are back in Hawaii. And so you, whether you decide later on you want to move to someplace else, you des you, they deserve your going back and trying to be helpful. The, you know, the guilt was overwhelming. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> especially from him. Yeah, uh, yeah, imagine him telling you that. Right, it was it was impactful. Wow. And so I did. I, I came back home, and, and that, that kind of changed your life in it a did. way. It changed if, my if, life. I mean, I could have stayed that, there. That that one one evening, a, a young young guy out of law school thinks I'm going to stay in D.C. and make it here. Yeah. And that changed where your whole direction. It did. And that's kind of a relationship. Uh, a very, very much decision, so. right? Well, and, and that the relationship I had with the senator followed me through most of my career. And he, had, of course, had a very, very long career. He died when he was 88 years old. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and, and that was extraordinarily helpful uh, to me, um, hopefully to him. Um, but it was a, it was a very important relationship in my life. Jeff, I, we're going to close now. I, what can you give just a few words of advice that you'd give to a young lawyer uh, starting out today yeah. in, in practice? Well, what I would say is, is while it's great to listen to people like me who are kind of ghosts of Christmas past, keep in mind that what we were able, what I was able to do, came as a result of things that were happening 40 and 50 years ago. You've got to come to your own conclusions today about the changes that are occurring in Hawaii and where it's going, and to pattern your career um, to be in, to be in in, uh, court, in in going in the right same way as as those developments are occurring, and they're occurring, and they're 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 going to be major changes, I think, in in Hawaii in the next in the next 25 years. Be aware, keep your relationships going, absolutely, and and, and look forward. Value your friendships. Value your friendships. Yeah, good advice. Thank you, Jeff. Thank I appreciate you. it very much. Aloha. Mark, aloha.